This program has been made possible by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries. When you have the Holy Spirit filling your life, you can expect to have a greater and a different level of communication with God than what you might have without that. We need to know the Holy Spirit as a person. Not a person like we are, but a person. And I say that he's a person because he has all the traits of personality. Everything that makes a person a person, he has it. The Holy Spirit is not an it. He's not an influence. He does influence us, but he's much more than an influence. He's, he's not just a power or a presence, although he does all those things. He is a person. He has knowledge. He has a mind. He thinks. He knows things. He has feeling. And he has will. And I want to just share a couple scriptures with you just to verify my point. 1 Corinthians 2.11. For what person perceives, knows, and understands what passes through a man's thoughts except the man's own spirit within him. So I can look at you and you can be sitting there smiling at me, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're paying one bit of attention to what I'm saying. You could be thinking about something totally different. Well, I don't know it, but your spirit knows it. You, you know, the inner part of you knows. Well, it's the same way with the spirit of God. He is the only one who fully knows the mind of God. So when we pray to know the mind of God on something, it's very important to realize that the Holy Spirit is living in us and he's the one that will reveal the mind of God to us. So when it comes to, quote, hearing from God or being led by the Holy Spirit, we talk a lot about the still small voice or many times when God speaks to you, it's going to sound like your own thoughts, but there's a different oomph on it. There's a different emphasis on it. And so there's a lot of ways that we can hear from God, and I'm not going to get into teaching on that. That's another teaching for another time. But I want you to know that when you have the Holy Spirit filling your life, you can expect to have a greater and a different level of communication with God than what you might have without that. It has nothing to do with your salvation. We're saved by the blood of Christ. But when we are filled with the Holy Spirit and we stay filled with the Holy Spirit, and I don't think it's just a one-time zing that we get. I believe that one day in the world sucks out everything you've got, and you need to get a fresh filling every morning in order to get out and function the way that we should. And so being all filled up with the Holy Spirit is not about being a Christian. It's about living like a Christian. Like one of the gifts of the Spirit that we'll read about later in 1 Corinthians 12, and, and that scripture starts out, I don't want you to be ignorant concerning the gifts of the Spirit. And yet there are many people that are ignorant concerning the gifts of the Spirit. They lack knowledge. And there was a time in my life when I didn't have the slightest idea what those gifts were, or were they available, or should I want them, or should I just assume if God wanted me to have one, he'd give it to me. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know. And I'm sure that there are people even here tonight that you don't know. Maybe everything that I'm saying to you is going to be totally like an eye-opener, and maybe for some of you it's just going to be a refresher. I taught this in chapel at my ministry this week, and so many people said to me, boy, did I need that. Man, it brought a fresh awareness of the ministry of the Holy Spirit in my life. And I mean, some people that were seasoned believers sent me text messages. That's exactly what I needed to hear. So we need to realize that the Holy Spirit wants to do supernatural things for us, in us, and through us. And one of the gifts of the Spirit is a word of knowledge. Now, that basically just means that you can know something that you don't know. That the Holy Spirit can cause you to know something that you don't know. And chances are many of you have words of knowledge at different times, but you don't even know what it is. You think it's just a coincidence or an oops or whatever. I believe that God functions that way a lot as I preach because I'll have people say or write to me, how did you possibly know that about me? 
How, how did you know that's what I was going through? Well, I don't know, but the Holy Spirit knows. And the Holy Spirit's in you, and the Holy Spirit's in me, so he's got this great communication thing going on where if we pay attention to him, we can know things that we don't know. But I had an interesting thing happen in a meeting just a couple of meetings ago. And, um, you know, I always want to be bold and step out in the gifts of the Spirit if I feel like God's wanting to use me. And so before I came to the platform, back in the back, I kept just kind of seeing in my heart this little boy about eight or nine years old with brown hair. And I felt like the Lord was putting on my heart that he had autism and his mother was a, was a single mom who had been convinced that it was all her fault and she just felt overwhelmed and didn't have any idea what she was going to do. So, you know, of course you go through what everybody else goes through. Well, what, what, what if, what if I'm just making that up or what if I'm just thinking it and see the, the thing about uh, those kind of things is sometimes you have to step out in faith. Now, honestly, when you've got five, 6,000 people in a room and you step out in faith, you're not taking too big of a chance because you might have somebody in the whole building that, <laughs> that has that need. So it's not like I'm the bravest person on the planet, but it was quite amazing by the time it got finished. So I, I told my story and then Pastor Mike came to me the next morning. He showed me this picture of this little boy that was like eight years old and he had all this brown hair. And he said, here's your boy. He said his mother was absolutely blown away. It was life changing for her. And that's why God likes to do things like that sometimes. It's not so somebody can stand on the platform and look like they're super spiritual, but the gifts of the spirit are for the good and the profit of everybody. And this woman desperately needed a word from God. She felt overwhelmed and over her head and she felt guilty. And she had driven two hours, is that right? To come to, come to that meeting. Wasn't even, she just needed to hear from God. And right away, first session, God says that to her. Things like that can change your life. Now, these kind of things don't necessarily happen all the time, but, it, you know, it's being filled with the Holy Spirit, like, like Pastor Mike always says, it's, it, it's not about being a Christian, it's about being a dynamic Christian. How many of you want to be a dynamic Christian? You want to you have uh, the wisdom and the power of God. So he, there's different gifts, and we're going to look at them later, but I thought that was a good example to share with you about how God can cause you to know something that you don't know. He knows the mind of God. 1 Corinthians 12, 11 talks about the will of the Holy Spirit. All these gifts, achievements, abilities are inspired and brought to pass by one and the same Holy Spirit who apportions to each person individually exactly as he chooses. Now I want to look at 1 Corinthians 12 and I'm just going to read you this list of the gifts of the Spirit I don't intend to get into a deep teaching on these things tonight because I have a different purpose, but I want you to be aware of them, and I want to say to you that there is a lot of good material available on being filled with the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit, and if you're hungry and you want to learn, then you can get some of it. And we have a book called Filled with the Spirit. I've got another book called Knowing God Intimately that just came out in paperback, and it's about all the fruit of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit. And let me say that you don't want to seek the gifts of the Spirit just to be a show-off and not seek the fruit of the Spirit because love is the most important thing of all. Amen? And here again, I'm aware that some of you are just like, I don't have a clue what you're talking about. Well, that's exactly why I'm talking about it. <laughs> that's the whole reason I'm talking about it because so many people, and I cannot even imagine how many people watching my television, you're like, what is she talking about? Well, see, the thing is, is I went to church for many, many, many years, and I, I had no idea that we could have a victorious, overcoming life by, instead of being overcome by everything, we could be the overcomers if we knew how to receive the strength and the infilling, the power of the Holy Spirit on a regular basis to help us be people who can instead of people who can't. And let me just throw this out to you. Because one of the things that one of the men at my chapel wrote and said to me, he said, the thing that you said that impacted me the most was you have not because you ask not. 
And see, we can't presume and assume. You need to ask. So I, every day I pray that I will be strengthened with all might and power in the inner man and that I will be filled and refreshed and refueled with the Holy Spirit. I don't know if you are aware of Pastor Tommy Barnett, but he's, he's mine and Dave's pastor and a great man of God, been in ministry for 50 years, I guess, or more, and uh, really, really respect him. And he, uh, he was at our board meeting and did some leadership training for us a couple of weeks ago, and he said that three times a day, he stops what he's doing, and he asks the Holy Spirit to guide him, to direct him, to lead him into the will of God, and to enable him to do everything that he needs to do. I think we need to have a little better communication with this wonderful person who's come to live on the inside of us, who brings us the presence of the Father and the presence of Jesus, the Holy Spirit, who has such an awesome, amazing ministry to us. And I think that you can see this ministry in your life just grow dynamically, and you can be so much closer to God than what you ever have been if you'll simply learn to just ask. And so hopefully by the time we finish tonight, you're going to realize, well, the Holy Spirit's the comforter. When I need comfort, I don't have to run to my friends. I can ask the Holy Spirit to comfort me. The Holy Spirit is my strengthener. Man, when I need strength, I can ask the Holy Spirit to strengthen me, and on, so on and so forth. So, what do you think? Does it sound good so far? And just think, we got three more sessions after this one. So 1 Corinthians 12, 1 says, Now about the spiritual gifts, the special endowments of supernatural energy, brethren, I do not want you to be misinformed. That's another word. They translated it misinformed in the King James. It's ignorant. Now, <laughs> so verse, um, let's start in verse Six. Now, there are distinctive varieties of operations of working to accomplish things, but it's the same God who inspires and energizes them all in all. But to each one is given the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, the evidence, the spiritual illumination of the Spirit for the good and the profit. To one is given in and through the Holy Spirit the power to speak a measure of wisdom. And to another, the power to express a word of knowledge and understanding according to the same Spirit. To another, wonder-working faith by the same Holy Spirit. To another, the extraordinary powers of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophetic insight, the gift of interpreting the divine will and purposes. To another, the ability to discern and distinguish between the utterances of true spirits and false ones, and boy, do we need that. Man, do we need that. I mean, on a regular basis, I pray for the discernment of the Holy Spirit to function and flow in my life so I don't think somebody is, wants to do me good when really they're out to use me or do me bad, or to think that something that somebody's saying is right when really it's not right at all, let me say loudly, we need to stop believing everything that we hear on the news and everything we read on the web. Amen. And to another, various kinds of unknown tongues, and to another, the ability to interpret such tongues. And I'm sure you'd all like me to stop right here and give a big Bible lesson on speaking in tongues, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to tell you that uh, it is a wonderful gift, and it's amazing to me that anybody who operates in these gifts or believes in these gifts, they're called Pentecostals or Charismatics. I wish that we could get beyond labels. Why can't we just be the children of God who believe the Word of God? I mean, some people, you know, say this one's a prosperity preacher and that one's, you know, this and that and something else. And it, it makes it sound like that's all that person ever teaches and that they're way out of balance on it. And that's just, it's just silly. 
I mean, we all should believe the Bible. And so really, no matter what denomination you're from or what the doctrine of that denomination is, and I'm not trying to offend anybody, we must believe what the Word of God says above what men say. Now, we are making a serious mistake if we don't do that. So really, if you're more interested in some of these gifts, then you need to study and grow and, and learn. And, you know, not every book you read is right on, but most books, there's enough good stuff in it that you can, can learn something from it. I'm reading a book right now on the person and work of the Holy Spirit. It's the third time I've read this book in my life. And there's, I love everything in it, but there's one part in here about one paragraph, and I just didn't agree with it at all. So I just wrote outside, I don't believe this. <laughs> so see, you don't have to swallow something just because somebody else says it. If, you're, if you don't bear witness with it and you don't feel like it, you know, you can be open to having your mind changed. But the point is, is don't, don't throw out somebody's teaching just because you find a thing or two that you don't necessarily agree with. Amen. Now, real quickly, don't have time to park here, but you need to be, you need to be, we all need to be content with the gifts that God gives us. And when I talk about gifts, it's not just those nine gifts that are listed there in Corinthians, but there are different manifestations of the power of God that work through us. I have a very strong gift of communication. I heard my husband say to somebody the other day, that is one woman that can talk about anything. <laughs> and the scary thing is, is I could probably sound like I knew what I was talking about. <laughs> and I mean, when I was a kid in school, when I was in high school, I mean, if, if I didn't know anything or hardly anything about the subject, I could write a paper on it that was brilliant. <laughs> but then there's a lot of other things that I can't do. I mean, I'm not great with all this modern technology and, you know, I mean, selfies were out three years before I knew what they were. And <laughs> I've still only taken one in my whole life. And I'm like, you know, I don't, maybe I'm wrong. I've spent all these years teaching people to die to self and now everybody takes pictures of themselves all day long. <laughs> I'm, so for my birthday tonight, Jackie brought me a, a selfie pick. It's like <laughs> stick, a selfie stick. <laughs> so you put your camera in it and you hold it out here and you can take pictures of yourself all day. <laughs> but I mean, my, my five-year-old grandson can work my phone better than I can. <laughs> so please, find what you're good at and do a lot of it. Amen? Amen. Find what you're good at and do a lot of it. And the thing is you're not good at, either don't do any of it or do the least amount you can. <laughs> because you're going to enjoy your life a lot more if you don't spend it trying to be a 10 at something you're never going to be more than a 3 at. <laughs> spend your time developing your strengths. I'm good at talking, so I just do it a lot. <laughs> Works out good. Now. The Holy Spirit also has a mind, the mind of the Spirit, and that mind of the Spirit is in us. Let's look at Romans 8, 5. For those who are according to the flesh and are controlled by its unholy desires, set their minds on and pursue the things which gratify the flesh. But those who are according to the Spirit set their minds on and pursue those things which gratify the Holy Spirit. Verse 6, now the mind of the flesh, which is sense and reason without the Holy Spirit, I love that. That's what the mind of the flesh is. It's just getting up here in your brain and trying to reason everything out and make sense out of it without considering at all the spiritual side of things and what the Holy Spirit wants to say or do. See, I can look at something and my mind says, there's no way I can do that. But then my spirit says, but all things are possible with God. So we have to stop living off the top of our heads. I hate it when I ask somebody something. They say, well, off the top of my head. It's like, please do not give me something off the top of your head. I can get something off the top of my head. So isn't that good? The mind of the flesh is sense and reason 
without the Holy Spirit. And how much of the world stays in that area right there? Just sense and reason, sense and reason. And how many people can you try to talk to about spiritual things and they're just so, oh, I'm sorry, but that just doesn't make any sense. That just doesn't make any sense. Well, it's because you're thinking with the wrong mind. Did you know that the Holy Spirit can have a very real presence in your everyday life? The Holy Spirit is God living within you. That means that you can have the wisdom and the comfort and the help of God living in you at all times. And that's all thanks to the life, death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So, yes, it's something that is very difficult to understand. But believe me, when you begin to walk in it, when you begin to ask the Holy Spirit to be a part of your life, things are different and it is an eye-opening experience to know that you are no longer alone. So we have four teachings from Joyce called the Holy Spirit. It will help you to dig into God's Word and understand what God is saying about the Holy Spirit and who the Holy Spirit is in your life. And then we also have a book called Knowing God Intimately. This is a beautiful book from Joyce that just helps you to understand who God is, how much He loves you, what He wants to be in your life. This is our offer for you today, and these are two of the foundational things that will just take your walk with God to the next level and make your life that much better. Coming up next, the story of a woman who, with the help of the Holy Spirit, followed straight into jail cells. Now, that doesn't sound like a good thing, but I'll tell you it is. You'll find out what she heard God continue to tell her to do after these messages. Get comfortable hanging out with God. You can learn how with today's resource. First are four teachings on the Holy Spirit. In this series, Joyce teaches who the Holy Spirit is as a person, the importance of having a relationship with Him, and how to live every day with help only He can give. You'll also receive the book, Knowing God Intimately. In this book, Joyce teaches the seven characteristics of God, His special gifts for you, and a new God-given purpose when you let Him guide you in mind, body, and spirit. These resources are available today for a gift of $35 or more. Visit us online at JoyceMeyer.org or call 1-800-727-9673. I really believe this is what I'm supposed to do, but I'm too afraid to take the risk. There are so many big decisions to make. How do I know for sure? I know I should get out of this toxic relationship, but I'm afraid of what people will think. I'll do it afraid. I'll do it afraid. I'll do it afraid. With God's help, you can embrace courage in the face of fear. Learn how with Joyce Meyer's newest book, Do It Afraid, coming soon. You know, normally we don't understand the troubles that we're going through, but God's plan is always perfect. Take a look at this story about a woman who found freedom through her brokenness. So, as she said, I'm Alyssa Allen. I had started doing jail ministry in August of 2015. For years, God had been telling me, I want your testimony. Your testimony will set many free. Um, I was molested for a large part of my childhood, was raped as a teenager by an acquaintance, married a man who was 16 years older than me when I was 21, um, was divorced after four years, um, and just kind of went crazy after that, because it was a miserable marriage, so I went nuts, closing down the bars, partying. I would send my then three-year-old son to his dad's on the weekends and go do whatever I wanted. And then by 2007, I was 32 years old. I was um, absolutely miserable and I was suicidal. The end of 2007, I had had a cousin who had been in prison for nine years and she was beautiful. And I remember thinking, how do you get out of prison for nine years and you look this good? Well, by her own confession, she said, cause I've been in the word for eight hours a day for the last nine years. Um, and it was actually her. I ended up going to church with her. I got saved that day. 
and she was the one that very shortly after I got saved handed me a, a very torn, ripped, colored on copy of Beauty for Ashes that I think came with her from prison. And she said, you need to read this. There were little things in that book that I really related to. And then the, the fact that that book gets you into the root of what's really going on. God had to chip away at that in me for, for years before I finally admitted how broken I was and how much I needed him and how much he was the only one that could, that could really heal me. But Beauty for Ashes was the catapult. You know, yes, I know it was the word. Yes, I know it was Jesus. But I mean, that book was put in my hands very soon after I got saved. And it was really a catapult for giving me the hope to push forward into what God really had for me. When we're looking for everything out here to fix what we are in here, it's, it's never gonna work. But God has a picture for you and why you're broken in here. And you need to know it. You need to understand why that is so that God can start to heal those places. He's gonna open up those locked doors in your heart where you've got all this pain and, and, and unforgiveness locked away. There are a couple jails within my reach that I will visit periodically about every three or four months I'll go to other county jails smaller county jails that are a couple hours away and just share my testimony God told me go share your testimony and tell other people how you found freedom it's just once you start really trusting God and see I know I would not be where I am if it wasn't for Joyce Meyer Beauty for Ashes and that was one thing I really also love about Joyce Meyer Ministries is they don't just bring books, they don't just bring the word, they bring tangible needs, basic needs, whether it's toiletries in jail, whether it's a hot meal, that is such a big deal. I became a partner because I wanted to be a part of what Joyce Meyer Ministries is doing. And as God taught me the importance of giving, I saw the importance of supporting ministries larger than myself because you really are reaching places outside of where you live. Isn't Alyssa's story amazing? It's so important to remember that with God, all things are possible, that he can bring beauty from our ashes. And Alyssa's journey to healing began with reading one of Joyce's books. Now she's helping transform the lives of others. And it is all because of the work of God and what his word taught her in her life. We at Joyce Meyer Ministries want to share God's word with as many people as possible and we need your help. And we would like to ask you to consider becoming a partner to provide ongoing financial support and prayers and to help us share Christ and love people all over the world. Reach out to us today and let us know that you would like to have the opportunity opportunity to make sure you're making a difference through the Word of God all over the world. Thank you for joining us and have a great day. We hope you enjoyed today's program. For more information, visit JoyceMeyer.org. This program has been made possible by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries.